Hey there, chemists. In this lesson, we're going to start to look at principles of atomic structure, namely how are electrons arranged in the atom, and this will lead into what makes certain elements react with each other to make compounds. Uh, we're going to focus today on the Bohr model of the atom, which is essentially a model that describes the nucleus of an atom as a positively charged center surrounded by different energy levels where electrons exist. I'm gonna draw it as two-dimensional circles, but it exists in space in 3D, and we'll focus a lot on those in the coming lessons. Uh, and if you show where energy levels of electrons are, I'm just gonna draw them as circles outside the nucleus, just roughly. And what's hard to see, but what I'm trying to show a little bit is that the energy levels actually get closer and closer in terms of their separation distance as you get farther from the nucleus. I'll actually say that. Note, energy gaps get smaller farther from the nucleus. Now, many of the principles of atomic structure that we understand come from properties of electrons that can be excited and relax and how those energy changes exist. They are quantized between these energy gaps, what we can call principal energy levels or shells. Uh, they all essentially mean the same thing. And what happens when you have, let's say, some electron in an energy shell, you can give it energy in the form of light or, or high energy radiation. That electron can get excited to some higher energy state uh, and then it falls back down and that emits light, sometimes in the visible range, sometimes in the not visible ranges, but we can quantify those energy transitions and it gives us a really good picture of how electrons are arranged in an atom. So I'll actually draw on this diagram and show that as electrons get excited, they fall back down from some high energy state to some low energy state and that comes out as light. So let's write all that out. Electrons can get excited. Electrons are excited. They move to a higher level. Then they fall back, then fall back. And they release energy as light. This releases light. And you probably remember from a former lab where you actually took small wires, dipped them in solutions of various alkali metal ions, uh, and just putting them in the flame of a, a burner in a laboratory is enough to excite those electrons and you give off different colors of light in the visible spectrum. This is the principle behind fireworks. Uh, different fireworks are made out of different chemical compositions and the excitation from the energy of giving off just by heating them up in the presence of a flame gives off specific wavelengths of light. Often many wavelengths of light, but they'll fall into different categories. So that means we need to look a little bit more closely at light. Light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which we measure in terms of wavelengths. And wavelengths are shown here to scale, not to scale, but to, uh, to things that are familiar to us in life. You know, very large wavelengths of light and the radio waves down to smaller things like microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, etc. Uh, it's not important to memorize these ranges, but most folks in introductory chemistry class should be familiar with the order of those wavelengths of light. And there's a pretty simple mnemonic that my own former students taught me, and it says, Raging Martians. Just picturing actual Raging Martians uh, invaded a place called Roy G. Biv using X-ray guns. So something very visible, <laughs> visual, and kind of funny to remind us of the order from low energy, radio, micro, infrared, 
right into the visible range, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and then into the higher energy range of ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. And that's what that actually means. The radio waves are on the low energy end of that list, whereas things like x-rays and gamma rays are on the high energy range. So, knowing that, can we quantify things related to light in terms of numerical values? Can we look at wavelengths of light and, and related to energy? Yes, we can. We need some chemical equations for this, or sorry, mathematical equations for this. We'll get to chemical equations. And I have the first few over here. They say an equation that governs light, uh, the energy of light is equal to uh, H times C over the Greek letter lambda, where H is Planck's constant. That's 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. C is the speed of light. That's 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And lambda is just the wavelength. usually given in nanometers, but it depends. It could be any of the base 10 units. Uh, the speed of light is related to the wavelength and the frequency. We usually use the Greek letter nu and then lambda to mean frequency times wavelength. So nu is the frequency. You could certainly use f. We see that a lot in most physics textbooks. It means the same thing. So combining that uh, with what we know about light, we can talk about how energy changes correlate with wavelength of light, and that just correlates with a color in the visible part of the EM spectrum. There's a few other equations I want to show you, though, before we practice calculating this. Uh, it's the wavelength of a particle. This is called the de Broglie wavelength. Uh, this is Planck's constant divided by the mass of a particle times its velocity. Uh, this is the wavelength of a particle things with mass actually have wave properties. And this becomes significant if the particle is very, very small on the order of a quantum of light uh, or an electron, something very, very small. Large particles don't have very large wavelengths, but they still exist, where m is the mass, and this is the letter v for velocity. I think the product of those two is actually just the momentum, isn't it? And then the last equation, it's also related to energy, but this is the energy of an electron in a shell. Energy of electron uh, in one of those Bohr shells in a shell. This is equal to a constant negative r sub h, that's called the Rydberg constant, times 1 over the square of that shell, where n is the energy level. And R sub H is a constant. This is 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. So let's learn how to use some of these equations and, and turn this energy of an electron into an amount of light. So the example we have says, what color would we see for an electron that's been excited up to level 5 and then comes back down to level 2? So for each of those energy shells, we have uh, an equation right above it, E, for the energy. So there's an energy at level 5, and there's an energy at level 2. And this is negative R sub H over 5 squared versus negative R sub H over 2 squared. R sub H is just the constant. And 5 squared and 2 squared, we can do this on our calculator. The first one turns into negative 8.712, uh, 721, sorry, let's go back, 712 uh, times 10 to the negative 20 joules. Uh, E2 is negative 5.445 times 10 to the negative 19. I'm just getting these from plugging them into my calculator. And what I want is the difference, change in energy from high to low. So E5 back down to E2 minus E2. And that gives us a value of 
0.5738, carrying a lot of extra sig figs here, times 10 to the negative 19 joules. What do I do with that? Well, if I want the uh, color, I really need a wavelength of light in order to get that. So I'm going to rearrange this equation up here and solve for wavelength, and then I get wavelength is Planck's constant speed of light over this energy. It's really the energy gap that we're talking about in that equation. And that becomes 6.6, what did we say, 2.6, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. C is 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And the energy change is what we just solved for, 4.5738 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Dimensional analysis lets me cancel my joules and my seconds. I'm in meters, uh, so I'm going to get a value that's in meters. This turns out to be 4.35 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Now, that's a very small length, so let's convert that into nanometers. You multiply it by 10 to the 9 nanometers per meter, and you get a nice 435 nanometers. And that actually corresponds to a range of the visible spectrum. We could round it to 430 or so. That's a pretty small wavelength in the visible spectrum. Looks like it's, if I look at this chart down here, uh, we're in the violet range. So we're right in there roughly. So this corresponds to violet. So whatever atom I'm talking about, if there's an electron in shell 2, gets excited to 5 and falls back down to 2, or wherever it started frankly, when it goes from 5 back down to 2, you emit uh, 435 nanometers uh, of, of energy. So that's how we quantify energy and observe these changes in electronic structure. And this really lends to how electrons are arranged in an atom, which is what we'll talk about in the next lesson.